Hi everyone. Uh, so in this video, we're going to do a crash course in integration because uh, I know some people were a little worried about things. Um, and um, so basically, I'm just going to do super, super uh, simple, quick things. Um, and these are all things you should kind of know already, uh, but I'm going to specify some things that are like things a little closer to what we do. Um, so let's kind of start at the beginning. Um, and why is my pen not working? Oh, there we go. There we go. Um, and so basically, if we recall what integration is, is we start off with some function. I don't know what it is, but some function. Um, and the idea is to try to figure out the area under the curve. That's the whole point of integration. That's all we're ever doing. We're just trying to figure out the area under the curve. Um, and so originally what we kind of do is we say, okay, if we have the area under the curve, we can estimate it by looking at like little rectangles under the curve, right? Um, and if you recall, these are called Riemann sums, right? So you just take the summation of your function times some change. So this is your height, uh, this is your width, uh, and this is your sum, right? So you're summing up over all of these rectangles. And the idea of, of integration is like, there's all these little gaps or things here, right? So you, this is always an approximation. Uh, and so we want to take this approximation and we want to make it actually uh, viable, something that we can actually know exactly what it is. Um, and so basically we convert these um, rectangles, we make them thinner and thinner and thinner until they're basically infinitesimally small, and we do an integration. And integration, so this is our sum, this is our functions, or our height, and dx, this is our width. So nothing really changes, it's just the notation changes a little bit. Um, and basically that's, that's all this is. Um, and so let's kind of look at some uh, normal functions that you should kind of already know how to do. Um, first off, there's polynomials. So like um, some of the polynomials that you should know is like x to the n, right? So if I take x to the n power, the x, what we normally do is we take, we add one to the exponent, and divide by n plus one. And here, since we don't have um, bounds on our integral, uh, then we just add a plus c. And here, the way to kind of always double check your work if you're better at derivatives is to just take the derivative, right? So xn plus one over n plus one plus c um, gets sent to, so here we have to multiply by the exponent and subtract one by the n exponent. And then the plus c, the derivative of a constant is zero. So that just becomes zero, these cancel, and we get xn. So this is kind of how we verify that things are okay. Uh, here, this n works for every n except for one n. The only n this doesn't work for is um, x to the minus one, right? Uh, and in this case, what we basically have is the natural log of uh, x. Um, and so this is one formula, like these formulas you should kind of uh, be used to kind of doing things. Uh, there's also the exponential. So this is another one that you should know. e to the kx uh, dx. Uh, this is e to the kx over k plus c. So it's almost like the polynomials, except we're not really adding one to the exponent. And this is mainly because e to the x, the derivative, uh, is just itself, right? Um, and then if we had the k in front, we would just multiply by k in the bottom. Uh, trigonom trigonometrically, uh, we also have these two. So if I do sine of x, this you should remember is cosine of x plus c with the minus sign, right? Uh, and then the cosine of x, this gives me sine of x plus c. Uh, so all of these you should kind of know, like right off the bat. Uh, these are like... Uh, things you should basically have memorized uh, since you've done them so much. Uh, there's two integration methods that I'm also going to be talking about that are used very frequently. These are like the two that like, if I ever run into an integration and it's not one of these, I try these next two examples kind of first. Um, I forget everything else and I just try these two. These are like the important ones. Uh, so there's integration by substitution. And basically the way this works is 
exactly what it sounds like. You substitute something in. Um, so let's look at an example. Um, we're going to look at first a kind of bad example, something where integration by substitution doesn't help, but it kind of helps us see like what's happening. So if I have some integral from a to b, um, x squared dx, basically what we're going to want to do is we're going to try to convert everything from x's to some new variable. So usually what we'll do is we'll make x squared be equal to y or u. I think most people use u, u substitutions. Um, and so this gives me what to do for the x squared, but I still need to figure out the dx and my bounds. So to figure out the dx, what I can do is take the derivative of both sides, 2x dx is equal to dy. This means that dx is equal to dy over 2x. And here, if you kind of look at this, we know that x is equal to the square root of y. So here, this is really equal to dy over 2 square root of y. Uh, so we know what dx is done. So this is done, this is done. And all that's left is the bounds. Um, a squared is one of the bounds. So a gets sent to a squared and b gets sent to b squared. So basically what this does is when we substitute in y, our bounds change by what the new bounds are in the y scenario. Um, our x squared becomes a y. And then our dx, we need to substitute in whatever our dx was. So dy over 2 square root of y. And this is why I'm saying this is not um, always like the best method, because like you can kind of see here, we made it a little more complicated. Uh, so basically what we have is 1 half a squared b squared um, square root of y dy. Here I just took uh, these two and they canceled, right? So I have a 1 here. This is y to the 1 half. 1 over 1 half is just 1 half uh, for the exponents. Uh, and then so here what we do is we add 1 to the exponent, right, 3 halves, uh, and we divide by the new exponent. Uh, and we'll do this from a squared to b squared. So here the 2s kind of cancel, 3 over 2. So we get um, b squared 3 half over 3 minus a squared 3 half over 3. So this is just b cubed over 3 minus a cubed over 3. And notice how we get the same solution if we had just done it outright, right? So if I had just done x third over 3, um, a to b, we get the same thing, right? So there's no difference. Now, like when do we normally use substitution? How do you know when a good method is to use substitution? A lot of times it's kind of just looking at the formula and knowing how one f um, function works into another function. So for example, if I were to look at something like this, um, one thing I might notice is first, this is complicated. I don't want to take the integral of this. But what I noticed right away is that x squared minus x, the derivative of that is 2x minus 1. So this up here is basically similar to, to, is basically similar to the derivative of x squared minus x. So like I notice this right off the bat because I've done all of these a million times. Um, and that's why like it's good to do a million examples. Um, and so this is basically what I'm going to plug in. I'm going to try this. So I'll say u is equal to x squared minus x. Um, and then I want to get rid of dx, so I have to take the derivative of both sides. So I get 2x minus 1 dx. So basically dx is equal to du over 2x minus 1. And so plugging these in, so I left the 2x minus 1 because I knew I was going to be canceling it after I do my derivative. I get a u on the bottom, and I get du over 2x minus 1. These cancel. I'm left with 1 over u du. And here I just get natural log of u plus c, but u we already know, right? u is x squared minus 1. So we get the natural log of x squared minus x uh, plus c. Uh, and so notice how this is much simpler to do than trying to figure this part out by yourself, right? This is, you would not be able to figure this out very easily. Uh, so this is where substitution really has a strong point. Um, Another method that we'll use in this class in particular um, that's probably um, even more important um, is integration by parts. Um, and I know most people really hate integration by parts. 
Um, but like for me, it's actually one of my favorite ones. It's pretty fun. Um, and probably because uh, long ago I figured out how to like mnemonically remember it. So integration by parts is basically this formula, right? Uh, and the way I remember it, um, it probably is going to sound a little weird, but basically what I do is I remember voodoo. So voodoo, like voodoo, like magic, hocus pocus. Um, so V, that's a bad V, V, U, D, U. And basically what this tells me is, okay, I know V, they're together, V and U are together, and then I have a D, U. But everything needs its pairs, right? So that means I need a V here. And then that also tells me what's on the other side. I didn't use DV yet, so I need to put DV there. And then I need U. So this is kind of how I just remember it. Voodoo. Voodoo. It works for me. Uh, if you have your own way of remembering, let me know. That'd be cool to find out. Um, so basically what we normally want to do is we want to figure out how to... So there's going to be something complicated here, and we want to make it more simple. And so the way to more, more simple is this derivative. Derivative kind of takes things away, right? So basically, whatever we want, this u, what we want here is something that's going to be reduced in size. So like, for example, if I have e to the x, x, the x, what I'm going to look at is like the little components, and I'm going to see what's going to keep getting smaller when I take derivatives. So I have x e to the x here, and I have x here. So if I take the derivatives, derivative, here I have e to the x, here I have 1. Doing it again, I have e to the x and 0, e to the x, 0. Notice how this eventually just goes away. It just becomes 0. And this, for me, is my little um, hint of, oh, I should make x be u, because x is eventually going to go away. And that's basically what I do. So then I say, OK, u is equal to x dv is everything else, so dv is equal to the e to the x dx. And then I do my normal thing. du is equal to dx. I take the derivative. Here I take the antiderivative. So v is equal to e to the x. Um, and then I use my voodoo magic. So I say uh, I use my uh, ex. I use my original formula. Then I use voodoo. So v u. And then we take off du. So here we have dx, and then we just have to remember to add e to the x. And notice how, since we made x simpler, this formula here should be much, much easier to do. Right? It's just e to the x plus c. And that's it. So that's why um, integration by parts is nice. This is definitely a formula you should use because we do use it heavily. Um, warning, we do use this heavily. So you should have this pat. You should have this down. You should know how to do this. Um, the last thing we kind of do, um, and I'm not really going to go over it, uh, but it's something that you should probably brush up on from your lectures, uh, from past uh, classes, um, and that's how to take, how to create integration functions. So like, for example, we might have to be um, looking at how far you are on a radial disk, right? So if I have some disk and I want to figure out how far I am integrating how far I am over this disk. Well, normally what we have to do is, okay, if I have to figure out how far I am, I need some width, so I'm going to add a little dr for my radius, and I'm going to integrate over this area, right? And you should have done stuff like this. Um, I'm fairly confident you did this in um, your integration classes. Uh, but this is something you should be able to do, so you'll have some function over dr. Um, and so you should be able to create these types of functions um, from some information given. Um, so that's basically it. That's the crash course on integration. Um, like I said, uh, I'm not going to go too far, too deep into it. It's more to remind you how the formulas work, how they kind of, um, relate to one another with things that help me remember things, um, and hopefully kind of remind you how to do things. I, I obviously don't care how they are proved or anything like that. I just need you to be able to use them, um, in like an exam situation or in other situations, right? Because this is basically it. Uh, so as always, if there's questions, feel free to ask, um, and I will see you in future videos. All right, bye.